Advice. Like the title says, I found a notebook while on a tourist trap, haunted house tour down here in Louisiana. Honestly, I don't care much for this kind of entertainment, but my girlfriend and I agreed that we'd both get to pick an activity during our road trip, and this was hers. Apparently, the house was abandoned by the previous owners a few years ago under mysterious circumstances. Whatever. Anyway, after that, the state bought the place and turned it into a historical site. Conveniently, they also offer overpriced ghost tours on the regular. The majority of the house has been cleaned and updated, but there are a few rooms that are off limits. That was all the information I really managed to absorb from the tour guide as he droned on and on about ghosts and voodoo and a pond somewhere and blah blah blah. Counting the guide, there's six of us in the group, and as soon as we hit the second floor, I broke off from the rest to take a piss. At first, I thought the bathroom up there was a closet because it was so small and there was a distinct odor of damp, rotten wood wafting out from under the door. I figured it was all part of the show, so I didn't pay much attention to it and went inside to relieve myself. While I stood at the toilet, I was browsing Reddit on my phone and a giant fucking spider fell from the ceiling and into the bowl. I yelped like a schoolgirl and my phone flew out of my hands. It landed with a wet slush behind the decaying cabinet under the sink. Not only did I find my phone back there, but also this wet, wrinkled notebook. Dark mold has seeped into the edge of each page. I hurried outside to get a better look at it and see what I could see before the guide discovers I'm gone. The whole thing is damp and smells of must, but I found something you whore junkies here might like. It's scribbled over a few pages, so I'm going to do what I can to type it up here on my phone. I can hear them on the other side of the door now. I hate this house. I hate this fucking house and I never wanted to buy it in the first place, but... I love my wife. I didn't like the way the creepy estate made me feel during our walkthrough with the realtor and I voiced this much to Allison, but she was having none of it. It's a sprawling 150 year old plantation house and Allie fell in love with it at first sight. Her dream house would be quite the opposite for me, because before the first box was off the moving truck, I already had a long mental list of necessary repairs the old place would need just to become livable. That list was quickly scrapped when, by the end of our first week, Allie broke the news to me that she was pregnant and I needed to get started on a nursery right away. Three years and one beautiful daughter later, here I am, locked in this wet, windowless bathroom for an hour, maybe longer. I've been listening to those things, whispering, breathing, and saying my name from the other side of the door. Through the wide gap at the bottom of the door, I can see their bluish, veiny, and long too long shadows of their bodies stretching far out of view down the hallway. Allie and Sarah are all I can think about, but I'm terrified by what will happen if I open the door. Their voices are perfectly synced as they beckon me, attempting to draw me out with their mere words. They have yet to touch the door or the knob and have made no attempt to come in after me. This had become a waiting game and I'm sure they have no need for sustenance. Sooner and not later, I will lose. I called the police a few minutes ago and they were all too happy to inform me that tomorrow morning would be the earliest they could get to me because of every road leading to or from our property is flooded. It hasn't rained a drop in weeks and the deputy confirmed as much to me but was unable to explain it. I know though, I fucking know what caused it but if I told him he would certainly write my frantic calls off as just a prank like everyone else has. Priest shrinks, family, friends, even a park ranger. None of them listen to me. It's just dress, they say. Well, to be fair, the priest did grace me with a house call recently, but has yet to return any of my phone calls since. Oh shit, one of them just tapped on the door. It was a sharp sound like the back of its fingernail flicking against the thin wood. It's only a matter of time before they try the knob, and it'll be easy for them to get me. These antique doorknobs and handles barely stay locked when the dead aren't trying to get in, let alone when the moment comes when their patience wears out. I'm done for. It's only a matter of time. As I imagine the way the waters outside were flooding the roads, 
So too are the events of the last few months rising up and over the breaking point of my sanity. I should have listened to Sarah. I should have taken her in my arms and ran from this place. We could have sat far off in the distance and watched this hellhole burn to the ground. To whomever finds this, I strongly recommend you do exactly that. There's a woman in a tree outside my window. Sarah said, waking me from a deep sleep as she climbed into our bed that night. I was too tired to fully comprehend those words, but I managed to mumble out, Bad dream, honey. All I cared about was that she fell quickly back to sleep. I enabled this behavior for far too long. Night after night, she would crawl under the blankets, whispering about a strange woman in the tree. I was in a heavy depression during the time, so my brain was incapable of connecting to dots. It wasn't until Sarah caught me going through photos on my laptop that it all came crashing down. I was mindlessly flicking through photographs of the house, our property, etc. when I landed on one of Allie. It was a candid shot of her sitting on the front porch, sipping a cold drink and wholly unaware of the camera. There was a content smile, barely noticeable on her face and her gaze rested far out on the horizon. She was at her most beautiful when she was natural. I broke down into such heavy sobbing that I didn't hear Sarah walk in. That's her, she said quietly, but I almost fell off the chair. I was doing my best to wipe away the tears. What? What, what did you say, sweetie? She ran her index finger down the screen over Allie's face. Ha! Huh, the woman in the tree. Instantaneous fear strangled me and I slammed the laptop shut. Sarah only looked up at me. Who is she? The tapping on the door just turned to slow knocking. You should have come out. Their voices are fucking miserable. Smooth but deep and full of malice. Severe postpartum depression. That's what the doctors diagnosed Allie with within a few weeks of Sarah's birth and that was all I could think about when I found my wife dangling from the end of a short length of rope tied to the largest branch of the tree. After too long of a moment just staring at her body gently swaying in the humid breeze, my focus landed squarely on Sarah and how I would never be able to explain this to her. Naturally, I assumed she would grow to blame herself and I couldn't let that happen. I wouldn't let that happen. Panic completely took over my body and I felt like I was outside of myself. Watching as I cut the rope from the tree, I gripped the frayed end of it and dragged her body across our property not thinking twice about disposing of it in our secluded pond. Inquiries, allegations, alibis, and excuses could all be dealt with at a later date. Right then, all I needed to focus on was Sarah. I returned to her house to hear her cry screeching through the window of her nursery. Who is she? Sarah asked again. Her soft voice was innocent and full of genuine curiosity. I looked deep into her eyes and decided to be a terrible father. She's... she's nobody, dear. Go play now. I wasn't in my right mind. Sue me. They're trying the knob now. I just slammed my weight against the door. Fuck. 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 I don't want to die and my screaming, tear-filled apologies don't seem to stay their progress. God damn it, I'm so sorry for everything. Open the door, Mark. Allie just spoke. The words gurgled in her throat and I can hear water splashing on the floor behind me. I just screamed something unintelligible at her, a slurry of snot and tears. Bobby! Sarah said, more gurgling, more splashing. Mommy found me. She showed me where she lives now. You should come with us. I can't stop crying and my muscles are getting tired of fighting. I miss them so much and I don't think there's really any other choice than to relent. That's it. Not a bad story. Well, my girlfriend just yelled for me. She must have finally realized I wandered off. In fact, all nine people in the group are giving me the stink eye about it. Especially those two in the back. They look real unhappy about being here. Probably because they brought their daughter. This is no place for a child. 